Hey guys, <clears throat> about to start another trivia show here. I'll wait for some people to join in. It's been a great weekend out here in Scottsdale. A little hot, but a perfect time to get a lot of stuff done inside. I had a little trouble with my phone, so I'm using Elisa's. Thank you, babe. I don't know why my Facebook on my phone didn't have a live option, but we're gonna hang out and wait for some people to join in and do another Sunday trivia show. Hope you're all doing well out there. I wanna thank again Funktiquities for letting me use their music. And thank you all for hanging out. Gonna give it a minute or two. And then we'll start this trivia up. Yep. Setting it all up. All right, here you go, babe. She's gonna use my phone. All right, we're getting some people in on this. I'll start up the trivia in just a sec. Got a few of us. And I guess let's start this off. First question this evening is, who lit the flame at the opening ceremony of the 1996 Atlanta Summer Olympics? Again, that was, who lit the flame at the opening ceremony of the 1996 Atlanta Summer Olympics? Thank you all again for hanging out. I want to thank again Funktiquities for letting me use their music. It's been great. And thank you everyone who's been a part of this. Again, the first question was, in the 1996 Atlanta Summer Olympics, what legendary American athlete lit the flame? Hey, Brent. Hey, Liz. Oh, Lisa. Thanks for letting me use your phone. It was not cursy. It was a male, I'll tell you that. Hey, Rex, welcome. Again, that was, what man, hey, Kenny, what man with the flame at the opening ceremony of the 1996 Atlanta Summer Olympics? Welcome, everybody. I'll give you a hint, it was a very famous boxer. Well done, Kenny. Again, that question was, who lit the flame at the opening ceremony of the 1996 Atlanta Summer Olympics? Eula Berry, what's up, man? That wasn't that, Chris. Eula Berry, it's been a minute. Again, that was, who lit? The flame at the opening ceremony of the 1996 Atlanta Summer Olympics. It was not Bruce Jenner. It was Muhammad Ali. And again, thank you all for hanging. Next one, a music question. According to the Beatles, it was 20 years ago today that who taught the band to play? Again, according to the Beatles, it was 20 years ago today that who taught the band to play? If anybody's able to tip, it's super appreciated. I'm Venmo. I'm at Kevin-McMahon-83. All the other ways are listed above. Again, that question was, according to the Beatles, it was 20 years ago today that who taught the band to play? Hey, Paul. Well done, Kenny. That is correct. Hey, Jeff. Welcome. 
That question again was, according to the Beatles, it was 20 years ago today that who bought the band, who taught the band to play? Again, that was, according to the Beatles, it was 20 years ago today that who taught the band to play? Got Funktiquities being played in the background. Well done, Tom, and welcome. Again, that was. According to the Beatles, it was 20 years ago today that Sergeant Peppers taught the band to play. And we'll stay with pop culture. In the movie, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I think they're making another one of those. When Ted was asked, who was Joan of Arc's wife? What did he reply? Again, in the movie, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. When Ted was asked, who was Joan of Arc's, who was Joan of Arc? <laughs> who... Again, in the movie Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, when Ted was asked, who is Joan of Arc, what did he reply? Thanks, Paul. I fumbled over that question a few times, so let me clear it up. In the movie Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, when Ted was asked, who is Joan of Arc, what did he reply? Yulberry, I hope you're doing awesome, man. It's been a long time since I've seen you. Hey, Mom. And that was in the movie, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. When Ted was asked who was Joan of Arc, he replied, Noah's wife. Hey, Wes, welcome. That was said many times in the movie, A Bodacious Babe. I'll probably see you tomorrow, Wes. Next one. Name the two universities involved in a rowing race every year since 1829 on the Thames River. Again, name the two universities involved in a rowing race every year since 1829 on the Thames River. Wes, I've been eating that snack you taught me about and it's amazing. And that was, name the two universities involved in a rowing race every year since 1829 on the Thames River. Not Stanford and Duke, good guess. I think they're both English universities. Again, that was, name the two universities involved in a rowing race every year since 1829 on the Thames River, and that was, or is, Oxford and Cambridge. That is true, Kenny. Correct, Tom. Again, that was named the two universities involved in a rowing race every year since 1829 on the Thames River. And it is Oxford and Cambridge. Next one. What continent has the only unclaimed landmass on Earth? Again, that is what continent has the only unclaimed landmass on Earth? Kenny, you are correct. Question again was, what continent has the only unclaimed landmass on Earth? Hope you're all doing great out there. It's a good weekend here in Scottsdale. Real warm, but got a lot done. Not Antarctica, good guess by both of you. Antarctica is a really good guess. It does start with an A though.
And that was Wakanda and has the only unclaimed landmass on Earth. The answer is Asia. Thanks, Tom. AZ is great. I had some stuff to take care of, and I did. And now here I sit. Next question. What is the name of the fictitious progressive auto insurance spokeswoman? Again, that is, what is the name of the fictitious progressive auto insurance spokeswoman? Gatorade Zero. Verner's and Grape is the bomb. Hey Sally, welcome. It's not Fran. Well done, Wes. Well done, Kenny. And that question was, what is the name of the fictitious progressive auto insurance spokeswoman? The answer is Flo. Next question. What Italian dessert can be translated into English as little tube? Again, what Italian dessert can be translated into English as little tube? If anybody's able to tip, it's super appreciated. On Venmo, I'm at Kevin Dash McMahon. Dash 83. All the other ways to tip are listed above this feed. And again, the question was, what Italian dessert can be translated into English as little tube? Hey, Zach, welcome. Well done, Wes. Wes, you are well-versed in good foods. Well done, Tom. Like I said, I've been eating that snack you taught me. It's going down great. Well done, Kenny. Tiramisu's a great guess, but not that one. Again, that question was, what Italian dessert can be translated into English as little tube. The answer is cannoli. When I used to work at an Italian restaurant way back when, that was our number one dessert. Again, that question was, but Italian dessert can be translated into English as little tube, and that is cannoli. Next one. What college football program has the most wins in history. Again, that was what college football program has the most wins in history? Hey, Al. And that was what college football program has the most wins in history. Thank y'all for hanging out. Not Alabama, but good guess. It's my home state. Again, that was what college football program has the most wins in history. Well done, Wes. Not Notre Dame. 
I am not from Indiana. <clears throat> Again, that was what college football program has the most wins in history. And the answer is the University of Michigan. Although I'm a Spartan, still got to pull for your home state. Hold on time. I don't usually go here, but I found this to be an interesting question. How many books of the Bible are named for women? Again, that was, how many books of the Bible are named for women? It's not many, but there are some. Again, that was, how many books of the Bible are named for women? Again, that was, how many books of the Bible are named for women? There, there's more than one. Kenny, you are correct. Again, that was how many books of the Bible are named for women? There are two. And that's Esther and Ruth. Good guess, Wes. Just one less. And that was how many books of the Bible are named for women? And that is two. It's Esther and and Ruth. Next one. What continuous country? Hey, Gino from Jamaica. Again, that question was what continuous country, not split up, has the most time zones? So, I'll help you out with that. France has the most time zones because they're all over the world. But this country is not split up. So it's all one land mass. And again, that was what continuous country not split up has the most time zones. Again, thanks to Funktiquities for let me use their music. Not Africa. Country, not continent, if I said continent, I'm sorry. What continuous country, not split up, has the most time zones? Correct, Tom? And that was, what continuous country, not split up, has the most time zones? Yeah, Wes, correct. Again, that was what continuous country that is not split up has the most time zones. And that is Russia with 11. Next one. What music group has sold the most albums of all time? Again, that was, what music group has sold the most albums of all time? And it's a group, not a solo artist. That was, what music group has sold the most albums of all time? Eagles are up there, but it's not the Eagles. Good guess, Tom. Kiss is a good guess. <coughs> They're a little lower down. One of their interesting stories, correct, Kenny? Well, that's a good story about Kiss. Is in the late 70s, they all put out a solo album. You know, that was supposed to signify what their character was all about. And they thought that if Kiss could sell millions of albums, that the solo album would sell millions of albums. So quadruple the number. 
It did not work out that way. Again, that was what music group has sold the most albums of all time? And the answer is the Beatles. Next one. What football player tossed the little kid a soda in the classic Super Bowl commercial? Again, what football player tossed the little kid a soda in the classic Super Bowl commercial? Yeah, I found that interesting. I was reading that book when we were in the same place. And again, that question was, what football player tossed the little kid a soda in the classic Super Bowl commercial? Well done, Kenny. It was a cool little commercial. I feel like the kid got his jersey or something too. And that was what football player tossed the little kid a soda in the classic Super Bowl commercial. And that was Mean Joe Green. Wasn't so mean in the commercial. Well done, Tom. Again, thank you all for hanging out. I really enjoy doing this. And I hope you are having as much fun as me. And that was what football player tossed the little kid a soda in the classic Super Bowl commercial. And that was mean Joe Green. Next one. What is the only continent that does not have a town or city named Rome on it? Again, what is the only continent that does not have a, a town or city named Rome on it? I got a Facebook update that somehow made it hard to go live on my phone. Not Asia, but a good guess. Correct, Sally. Correct, Kenny. Again, that was, what's the only continent that does not have a town or city named Rome on it? And the answer is Antarctica. Next one. What does Auld Lang Syne mean? Usually on New Year's Eve is when we hear that song. But what does Auld Lang Syne mean? Welcome, Kim. Again, that was, what does Old Lang Syne mean? And that was, what does Olang Sign mean? And that was, what does Old Lang Sign mean? Old Lang Sign means times gone by. 
And that was Old Lang Syne Means. Times gone by. We all have that sometimes. Myself included. Next one. What is the first country to celebrate New Year's Eve? Well done, Kim, and welcome. That is correct. Old Lang Syne Means. Times gone by. Jim, thanks to Funktiquities for letting me use their music. Facebook did some kind of update that made going live harder. So right now I'm using Elisa's phone. Thanks for letting me do that, babe. Next question. What is the first country to celebrate New Year's Eve each year? Again, that's what is the first country to celebrate New Year's Eve each year. Sally Fiji might be right, but this is a, a, a bit of a bigger country. And I'm not sure if uh, Fiji, it's not Japan, but good guess was. I think Fiji might be like a territory of something. But this one is a standalone country. I believe the town is called Auckland. Just east of Australia, Tom. Again, what's the first country to celebrate New Year's Eve each year? Well done, Kim. Well done, Tom. Thanks. Sarge, thanks. I'll check that for sure. Sarge, when the show's over, I appreciate you. It's Kevin, Dash McMahon, Dash 83. Sally, correct. Sarge, I can't on the phone while I'm doing the show, but I will immediately after. Again, that is, what is the first country to celebrate New Year's Eve each year? And that is New Zealand. Next one. What NFL team had the first cheerleaders? Again, that is what NFL team had the first cheerleaders? Give you all a hint, it's not the Cowboys. Oh, no, not Dallas. That's the, I think most people would think that. But there was a team back in 54 that had the first cheerleaders. Good guess, it's not Dallas. Cowboys is a great guess. They're the most well-known cheerleaders. But there was a team in 1954 that had the first cheerleaders. And again, that is what NFL team had the first cheerleaders. Hey, Jackie. Not the Bears, a really good guess, though. It is a cold weather city. Again, that was what NFL team had the first cheerleaders. Not the Rams, really good guess. It's a Midwest team that moved. Welcome, Jackie. It's a Midwest team. I believe they moved kind of like in the middle of the night. So it wasn't really a Midwest team. I guess it'd be like a Mid-Atlantic team. But they moved to the Midwest. Good guess on the Vikings. So the team that had the first cheerleaders was a mid-Atlantic team that moved to the Midwest. I think it was in the middle of the night from the 30 for 30 I saw. Again, that was what NFL team had the first cheerleaders. Not the Browns. 
I think they kind of moved in the middle of the night too. Well done, Tom. Correct. Well done, Jackie. Correct. Well done, Kenny. Correct. Well done, Kim. Correct. If anybody's able to tip, it's appreciated. I'm Venmo. I'm at Kevin. Dash McMahon. Dash 83. And all the other ways to tip are listed on top of the feed. And again, I thank y'all. If you tip or not, I appreciate y'all being here. And thank you. Again, that was what NFL team had the first cheerleaders. And that was the Baltimore Colts in 1954. Before they became the Indianapolis Colts. Next one. In the show, Dennis the Menace. What is Dennis the Menace's last name? Again. In the show, Dennis the Menace. What is Dennis the Menace's last name? Pretty common last name. I don't think anyone on here right now shares it, but a fairly common last name. And again, that was, what is Dennis the Menace's last name? Aging myself a little bit that I can remember like reruns of it. Oh, well done, Kim. That is correct. Well done, Jackie. Again, that question was, what is Dennis the Menace's last name? I'm really liking this mix by Funtiquities tonight. I went with their Soul mix. It's called Soul Girl. Can you get me back on time? Well done. Again, that was, what is Dennis the Menace's last night name? And that is, he was Dennis Mitchell. Next one. What is the name of the island in Michigan that banned cars in 1898 and still has horse-drawn carriages? <clears throat> Again, what is the name of the island in Michigan? that banned cars in 1898 and still has horse-drawn carriages. Sun's starting to set here. Kind of beautiful looking. Well done, Tom. Correct. You've probably been there. I used to go there when I was a kid. Long, long ago. Again, that was. Well done, Kim. What is the name of the island in Michigan that banned cars in 1898 and still has horse-drawn carriages? Yeah, Mackinac. I remember that, Tom. You're right. It was one of those Michigan towns slash islands that if he didn't know how to pronounce it, it'd be like impossible, like crash it. There's a bunch of them actually. Again, the question was, what's the name of the island in Michigan that banned cars in 1898 and still has horse-drawn carriages? That is Mackinac Island. Next one. Who took over as lead guitarist of the Yardbirds when Eric Clapton quit in 1965. Again, who took over as lead guitarist of the Yardbirds when Eric Clapton quit in 1965? And 
Okay, Ivan. Again, that was who took over as lead guitarist of the Yardbirds when Eric Clapton quit in 1965. All right, let me see how to do this, Sarge. Well, Sarge, right now, I, you're not being a pain at all, and I appreciate that you tip me. I seriously do. Um, on the phone I'm on, it's my girlfriend's, so I'm just using the Facebook feed on hers. I will definitely look after this show and let you know that it got there. I apologize I'm not able to do it right now. And I will look, like, right after this show. And again, that question was... Who took over as lead guitarist of the Yardbirds when Eric Clapton quit in 1965? <laughs> Again, that was. <clears throat> Who took over as the lead guitarist in the Yardbirds when Eric Clapton quit in 1965? And the answer is Jeff Beck. Next one. What is the only continent that is in... No, what is the only continent that is in all four hemispheres. Again, what is the only continent that is in all four hemispheres? Don Henley's a great guest, but it was Jeff Beck. Quite the amazing guitarist, all the people in the Yardbirds. And the next question is, what is the only continent that is in all four hemispheres, in the north, south, east, and west? Again, that is, what is the only continent? Not Asia, really good guess though. Well done, West, that is correct. Again, thank you all for playing along. I really appreciate it. Again, that was, what is the only continent that is in all four hemispheres? Wes, I'll give you a call after this. Again, what is the only continent that is in all four hemispheres? Well done, Sally. And that was, what's the only continent that is in all four hemispheres? And the answer is Africa. Here's another sports one. Well done, Kim. Another sports one. Who is the only Heisman Trophy winner as a player to eventually coach a Heisman Trophy winner? Again, that was. Who's the only Heisman Trophy winner as a player to eventually coach a Heisman Trophy winner? And I think he was the coach of the team he won it on. I think, if I remember right, which I mostly do, he was not only a winner on that team, he coached a winner on it. And that was, who's the only Heisman Trophy winner as a player to eventually coach a Heisman Trophy winner? Not Harbaugh. I don't think he won the Heisman. And I don't think he's coached anyone that's won the Heisman. Like in college, maybe in Stanford. I don't even think it's Stanford. Again, who's the only Heisman Trophy winner as a player to eventually a coach a Heisman Trophy winner?
He coached the player to a Heisman at Florida. Again, that was. Who's the only Heisman Trophy winner as a player to eventually coach a Heisman Trophy winner? And that was, who's the only Heisman Trophy winner as a player to eventually coach a Heisman Trophy winner? Well done, Kenny. You are correct. And that was, who's the only Heisman Trophy winner as a player to eventually coach a Heisman Trophy winner? And that is Steve Spurrier. Coach Tebow. And he won it himself. Next one. Which Shakespeare play begins? When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? Again, which Shakespeare play begins? When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? Romeo and Juliet's a great guess, but not that one, Connor. And welcome. Well done, Tom. Well done, Wes. Well done, Kim. Tempest is a good guess, but not that one, Sally. And that was what Shakespeare play begins. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? And the answer is Macbeth. And next one. What two cities did the world's first International Auto Traffic Tunnel Connect. Sally, you're correct. It was Macbeth. Again, that next one is, which two cities did the world's first international auto traffic tunnel connect? Sunset's just looking beautiful out there. It's a real hot one here in Arizona. But the air conditioning is a savior. Not New York City. What two countries, what two cities, not London and Paris. I think that one popped up in like 96. This one was older than that. Again, what two cities did the world's first international auto traffic tunnel connect? One of them is called Rock City, and the other is those from Rock City get their hockey equipment in the other one. I guess if you play hockey, it's, it's contingent upon. Again, that was what two cities did the world's first international auto traffic tunnel connect? Correct, Kim. Well done. Again, that was what two cities did the world's first international auto traffic tunnel connect? Not Vancouver. Good guess, though. It is a Canadian city. In the province of Ontario. Again, 
Again, that was. What two cities did the world's first international auto traffic tunnel connect? And the answer is Windsor, Ontario, and Detroit, Michigan. I used to go down through that tunnel a bunch. Also used to use the bridge. Again, thank you all for hanging out. I appreciate it. And if you'd like to tip, it's super appreciated. On Venmo, I'm at Kevin-McMahon, spelled like my name, dash 83. All the other ways to tip are listed above. Kim and Tiffany, well done. And the final question for this evening is... Who was the first musical artist to win a Pulitzer Prize that was neither classical nor jazz? Again, who was the first musical artist to win a Pulitzer Prize that was neither classical nor jazz? You guys are all awesome. Appreciate y'all playing along. We're going to keep doing this every Sunday. Well done, Jason. Hank Williams is a great guest, but not him. Hey, thanks for getting Team Patty's involved, Jason. Thank you. All right, that again was, who was the first musical artist to win a Pulitzer Prize that was neither classical nor jazz? Not Bob Dylan. Good guess. Not Dave Brubeck. Good guess as well, though. It was kind of recently. Nice. Again, that was. Who was the first musical artist to win a Pulitzer Prize that was neither classical nor jazz? And that was Kendrick Lamar. Again, if anybody's able to tip, um, on Venmo, I'm at Kevin, dash McMahon, dash 83. All the other ways are listed above. Hey, Tracy, I want to thank you all for hanging out. I appreciate you. And I have a great time doing this. I'll see you all again soon, here every Sunday. Y'all have a great week. Be kind to yourselves and each other. Take care.